Hello, today I will be demonstrating SVMs using the libSVM package. We will be solving the text classification problem of classifying sentences as either interesting or simple. We will define an interesting sentence as a sentence that is long, complex, compound, or a combination of these three. A simple sentence is any sentence that is not interesting. Since we have two clear classes, interesting and simple, an SVM will be a great tool to classify new sentences. We will build up the SVM using four features of each sentence. This number of words, the number of connecting words such as and, but, or, or yet, etc., the number of commas, and number of semicolons. Think of each of these features as a different coordinate in a vector, so our SVM will be working in 4D. Here you can see an example of a simple sentence and an example of an interesting sentence. Clearly the interesting sentence has more going on, and the features help capture that. Now, here are the files that we'll be using. SVM train is what we will use to build up our SVM, to train our SVM. SVM-predict is what we will use to classify new data. And convert data is a file that I wrote that will be used to convert sentences into the format that we're looking for so that SVM can train and predict our data. So to start, we have a file here called unformatted sentences. This file contains 100 sentences, 50 simple and 50 complex, that the SVM will be trained on. Uh, the 1 stands for interesting and the 0 stands for simple. Now obviously this data doesn't make any sense to an SVM, right? This makes sense to us, but we needed that, we need the feature and label to make sense. So SVMs take information like this, where label is either that 1 or 0, and then the values each of these is a feature, number of words, number of connectors, number of commas, number of semicolons, and then the actual value of those features. So for each of these sentences, we need to convert it to look like that data so that the SVM will work. And that's what convert data does. Now for simplicity, I've already done that for this file. As you can see here, we have all those sentences converted to uh, the libSVM format. Um, I did this earlier and now we can use this data set to train our SVM. So we'll do that by using the SVM train method program on our sentences. Now what we just did was train uh, a SVM, a classic or classifying SVM, not regression or anything special, just a regular good old-fashioned SVM, uh, linear and default cost of one. Basically it's the most simple SVM we could have created. Now we have some outputs here um, and a lot of them won't make a lot of sense and they're not really needed. The really important one is this right here. This is interesting because this number was the, um, uh, the optimal objective value to the dual problem that the SVM had to solve to be generated. And this number right here is the total number of support vectors in our data. Now, if we looked at our files again, we'll notice that we have one new file called sentences.model. Now, svm-train will always output a new uh, file with whatever we gave it plus dot model. So we gave it sentences, and it gave us dot model. So now we have our SVM, but now we need some data to classify. So we have to create a new sentence. Um, and we can't just give it a regular old sentence because of the reasons of before that SVM needs, you know, some real hard data. So we can use convert data and we'll give it a sentence and it'll pop out uh, a file called sentences.t that will either contain whatever sentence we're about to give it now or uh, a list of sentences depending if you gave it a file earlier. So here it's asking for an interesting or simple sentence. What are we going to give it? Well, let's just give it a simple sentence. This is a simple sentence. Now everyone agrees that that's a simple sentence. And what we have now is that we have sentences.t and here we see it's five words long. It's got no connecting words, no commas, 
and no semicolon. So real simple word. What we can do next is use svm predict, give it the file that we want to classify. In this case, the sentence, this is a simple sentence. The model that we based our SVM off of, which was what we did earlier, and then an output file. And when we push enter, we'll see that the SVM got it right, which isn't really surprising. It's pretty easy. We could mm, screw with the SVM. We could do a misclassification on purpose. This is a simple sentence. And yes, it's a simple sentence, but we're going to classify it as an interesting sentence. And it works just fine. Now what we're saying is we want to predict what this is a simple simple sentence will be. We're expecting that it'll be a one, but based on our model, the SVM is probably going to say it's a zero. And of course it does. So it was looking for a one, it got a zero because that's how the SVM was trained. So we'll see that the SVM is working as expected. Now doing it with only one piece of information isn't really the best way to do it. So let's take our unformatted sentences and give it and format all those sentences again into the .t model. Now, as it turns out, sentences and sentences.t are now the exact same file. But it, it's okay to test our SVM on the, on the data it was trained. So it was trained on the data, on the same data. Now we're going to see if it can actually take that data again. And without remembering exactly what each piece was, it has it's been trained on it, but it doesn't know exactly what each piece is supposed to go. We'll see if it can predict where each piece um, is supposed to be. And we'll do that using the basic SVM that we've been using for everything else. So here we're going to predict where everything in sentences.t goes, which just so happens to be a list of 100 sentences. 50 should be simple and 50 should be interesting our model, which was just a linear SVM, nothing special at all, and we'll put it into output docs.txt. And we'll see that I got 96% correct, which is really good actually. So based on all the data that it was trained on and how um, the data in here is labeled, it got 96 out of 100 correct, which I, I think is pretty good. Now, what if we use a different type of SVM though? What if instead of a classic linear SVM, which is the most basic, most simple SVM you could create, we use something a little bit more interesting. What if we used a polynomial SVM, or in this case, we're going to use a radial basis SVM. So we do that by giving it some options, and we'll set the cost C something like 10. And we'll give it sentences. This was our training data, remember. So we've trained a new SVM uh, stored in sentences.model. And this time, our solution to the optimal problem was negative 74. And the total number of support vectors we have is 53. Now, there's a theorem that roughly says that the more complex the SVM, the better the prediction should be, so the less error there should be. So here, we'd expect to have better classification. So we can test that. So using svm-predict, our same um, list of sentences as before, but our new model uh, based off of a more complex um, SVM, we'll see what we get. So here we see that it was 99% accurate, uh, which was better than our linear classification one. So here clearly the more complex the SVM the better it's doing. Now that's not always the case. Um, sometimes the SVM isn't the correct choice for this kind of data, but that doesn't mean that you can't try to make it the best choice. So I could create some SVM that I know is going to fail based on uh, different kernels and different attributes, um, but letting the 
uh, letting the libsvm package do the work itself, it's going to get good classification. So here we've shown that we can classify new files or new sentences based on training the SVM. And the really important key was that we're training the SVM on the number of words, the number of connecting words, and the number of commas, and the number of semicolons. These were the four things, these were the only four things that the SVM could look at to determine if it was a simple or an interesting sentence. Um, all those ones at the start of the files, that was so that we could either train the data saying, hey, sentences that have 20 words, five commas, two connectors, and no semicolons, those are interesting words, those have one. But words that are, this is a simple sentence, which is only five words, no commas, no semicolons, no connectors, that's a zero. But there's also gonna be times where a word, it might be six words, a comma, but still be interesting. So this, these different combinations of features is what really makes up the SVM and where those vectors come from that we're creating that decision surface and that dividing line. Um, and so that's how, um, that's why when given the new sentences, after we convert it to the data format where we calculate its number of words and where we calculate all of its features, it takes that vector, because it really is just a vector, right? It's just a 40 vector, and then it determines using the decision surface where it belongs in each class. And so that's a demonstration of libsvm. Um, just a couple of touch up things. If you want to change our training data right here, all you have to do is modify unformatted sentences and then call convert data on unformatted sentences and it'll generate a file called sentences.t and just rename that to sentences. Uh, the libsvm standard is to use sentences or like whatever your thing is without any um, extension and then that's your training data and without any extension. Uh, the same kind of thing but with .t for test is the convention for the test file. So convert data will always output sentences that test because it is expecting you to use that to convert the data. But you can also use it to create your training sets, just rename it to something without an extension. Also, if you're concerned that your data is not good, you could also you can always call tools slash check data dot py on the data and see that it is either good or not good. If there is errors, it will yell at you and show you what's wrong. Um, and this this file right here is provided by the libsvm package, which is nice. So. That's a basic demonstration of SVMs. Um, hope you enjoyed and hope it was informal, informative. Thank you.